all of this stuff is probably a CIA operation anyway to try to get a massive uprising going on in America, get a race war going, get a civil war going. But I tell you, we are praying, and I believe it's not going to happen. And I believe what they think is going to happen is going to backfire on them. It's going to backfire on the media. It's going to backfire on every plan, what the way we're praying that God would unravel every plan of the enemy and pull the wheels off of Pharaoh's chariots, that God would wreak havoc in the camp of the enemy, that he would turn on themselves like a dog on its own tail. Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown is with us for about the next 40 minutes. Then Pastor Roman Pena, good friends with Gary Haven, also part of the same prayer council, National Prayer Council with President Trump, is also going to be joining us. I'm on the road in Seattle. The crew is in Austin, Texas. Again, Gary Haven uh, is there, researcher, filmmaker, founder of Curves, a billionaire entrepreneur, uh, their co-host, Owen Schroyer. I cannot, and I'm going to turn the interview over now so they have more time, I cannot express to you the razor's edge we're on right now. Mr. Brown, uh, who famously is there with his hands laying on the president a few months ago, and the media demonized it, uh, went to Congress uh, the day after that and was told by high-level congressmen they're preparing a, a, a coup, an overthrow, outside of impeachment. And then he got visited by the Secret Service, and he reportedly went back and talked to his source. They said, no, we mean a physical removal. Well, we have the former head of the CIA, Brennan, who's a Wahhabist, admittedly converted to radical Islam, saying... You better shut your mouth and watch your mouth. We have Schumer saying we have seven ways of Sunday to take you out on CNN as well. And then you have Brennan coming out four days after Brown was on the show and saying it's true at the Aspen Institute with Wolf Blitzer and the former head of national intelligence, uh, Clapper, that we are preparing outside of normal areas, outside the Constitution, to remove the president suddenly Get ready. Both parties are going to do it. Prepare yourself in the next two months. Now, that was three weeks ago. We're getting close to a month out from when they say they're going to be done. And that's why you see the, the operatives on the Economic Council leaving him. Uh, it's why you see uh, this whole hoax that he's a racist and never uh, decried David Duke, never decried the events in Charlotte. That's why we now know crisis actors were hired, according to the Democrats themselves, and sent there to stir up the fight. We're not defending the white supremacists either. We're saying it's a staged event. This is their move. They're, they're getting ready to try to hurt him in the eyes of the public enough to when they kill him or drug him and say he's collapsed, that people just buy into it somehow, and then you'll all feel disillusioned, and you as his listeners, his supporters, Christians and others, will be so demonized that you can be the new Jews in America, because that's what they've done. Hillary creates alt-right nine, ten months ago. Then she connects it to all conservatives, all Christians. Then, because it's her term the Democrats created, they can now define alt-right as the white supremacist, even though it's a tiny minority, probably a hundred white nationalists there. Maybe five or six idiot KKK morons. But it doesn't matter. The president says, come together, love each other. I decry the white supremacists. They don't care. They're going to beat this drum ahead of the big event. So we need to pray here today, not just cover this info. Now, after he was again on, they had Al Gore go on the Late Late Show and say, we're getting ready to take him out in the next few months. Both parties, let's work together. Then they had Phil Mudd. Yes, I'm not kidding. Our evidence is related to the doctor uh, who helped John Wilkes Booth kill uh, our other Republican president. Abraham Lincoln, he's from Virginia. We trace his lineage. It's crazy. His name in the Latin even means the man of the swamp. So a man of the swamp related to the guy reportedly uh, that killed Lincoln or helped John Wilkes Booth kill him, he was convicted of it, is on CNN as the former deputy director uh, of the CIA in basically covert action killing people. He's not a pencil pusher. And former deputy director of the FBI. He, he's, he's held both seats, works for the Democrats. He is Mueller's best friend, basically. He said, we're getting ready to kill him. Okay, so they're now on TV a week ago saying we're going to kill him. So talk about the pastor, what he told you being confirmed. We're going to go to the pastor here in a moment. and But I wanted to play uh, Mud here uh, saying this just a week ago. Here it is. What was your response, Phil Mudd? A couple surprises. Let me give you one bottom line. As a former government official, government's going to kill this guy. 
He defends Vladimir Putin. Their State Department and CIA officers are coming home. And at Langley and at Foggy Bottom, CIA and State, they're saying, this is how you defend us? And, and we, uh, Phil, before, I, I, I mean, I want to ask you a question, but Phil, just... To reiterate, obviously, when you're talking about killing, you're using that as a metaphor. You're yeah, not talking about. Yeah. I, I, I just, I just. What I'm make... saying is, is government. People talk about the deep state. When you disrespect government officials who've done 20 or 30 years, yeah. they're going to say, "Really? You send the, Vladimir Putin sends officers home, and you support him before you support?" I just, I just want to, I just want to yes. underline. Absolutely. Amanda, uh, okay, that's enough. Trump signed the sanctions. It's all lies. He didn't even say that about Putin. Just, it's lying to the public. They, they have nothing but disrespect for you. They're not going to stop lying. So, Pastor. Uh, Rodney Howard Brown, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. I'm going to give you the floor now. Please take over with your co-host uh, in the next 40 minutes or so. And that, of course, is Gary Haven and Owen Schroyer. But thank you for being the watchman on the wall that really, as you signaled this, uh, then in the days that followed, the dam broke. This is so biblical. Uh, I really want to hear your teaching, sir. Take over. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on again. I just got back from a trip to Asia. I was in India, Sri Lanka, and Hong Kong. And everybody was so excited about the president. You know, they, not everybody watches the BBC and CNN, but uh, there were many Christians there praying. People have joined the initiative to pray for the president. You know what I always say? It's a miracle that Donald Trump made it to the White House. And of course, he's there. He's undoing the agenda of the globalists. And so they're so upset. First of all, the Russian narrative comes, you know, it, it's on everything. Russia, Russia. Now, of course, that whole thing is unwinding. And they're finding out that Russia had nothing to do with the with the with Trump getting elected. It was actually the American people. So now, of course, they stirring up all this other nonsense now, trying to get racism going, get a race war, get what we call an American spring going. And then it was actually supposed to start on the 2nd of July. So they're actually running late. But I tell you, I believe it's going to fail. Because I don't believe the polls or anybody that says that the president has lost his support. I believe the president's support has grown. The American people are not stupid. They're seeing through the lies of the mainstream media that has now been what people don't understand when the president made the statement about Charlottesville and he talked about both sides. People don't understand that Antifa was co-opted and so was Black Lives Matter was co-opted. And so and there's probably people inside the Ku Klux Klan that have been co-opted. So all of this stuff is probably a CIA operation anyway to try to get a massive uprising going on in America, get a race war going, get a civil war going. But I tell you, we are praying and I believe it's not going to happen. And I believe what they think is going to happen is going to backfire on them. It's going to backfire on the media. It's going to backfire on every plan. What the way we're praying that God would unravel every plan of the enemy and pull the wheels off of Pharaoh's chariots, that God would wreak havoc in the camp of the enemy, that he would turn on themselves like a dog on its own tail, and that God is the church is going to wake up and the preachers need to, excuse me, Alex, the preachers need to grow a pair and stand up in the pulpit and call a spade a spade and say it just like it is and draw a line in the sand and tell the devil, you're not going to have America. God has heard our prayer. He gave us Donald J. Trump as a last minute reprieve. And I don't believe God answers prayer for us suddenly now to be set back. And so I understand their plan to take him out, but they are not going to succeed, not on our watch. And we're not going quietly into history. They're smoking wow, some incredibly bad weed if they think we're going quietly into history. I, I'm going to skip this break so you have even more time. This year on fire, and it's total truth. And I had absolutely forgotten that Soros and all of them announced and spent hundreds of millions that July 2nd, the new revelation was coming. They were going to start race wars in America, and they think we're so stupid that it all fizzled out, but then it finally happened on Soros's birthday. They've announced it all, and then there's new levels of lying they're putting out against all of us. But as you said, you're right. Well, there's providence here, so please continue. I, I, I am going to leave now, or I'm going to be interrupting. I want the, the, the other co-host to jump in, but keep laying out what you're saying, because what you're saying is what's in my heart, what's intellectual, I understand, but also folks I know in the Pentagon, people I know that have been high-level CIA, State Department, not just Pachinik, they're saying exactly what you're saying and naming names. It's criminal elements of the CIA, not the whole CIA, but the deep state leftist, and they are so angry because he's turning the economy around, uh, the blessings are coming back in when he, on January 20th, asked for God to come back into America and Providence, and they use the name Jesus Christ. I mean, this is powerful, and this is clearly a spiritual war, 
because they hate Christians. That's why they fund uh, Orthodox Islam to attack Christians. So well, you've got 10 minutes to break or 12 minutes to break, and we've got the crew here. Lay out, Pastor Brown, what we're facing, and then please give people your website so people can learn more about your powerful teaching. You'll be here with us till 40 after, but you can stay longer, too. We've got another member of your uh, your great uh, international and national organizations that also prays with Trump, Mr. Pena, joining us. But please continue. Okay, so here's what they're trying to do. Obviously, they're trying to label everybody as a white extremist, as a racist. Our church here in Tampa is totally integrated. We have every tribe and tongue. We've been working in the inner city of Tampa. The church is 20 years old. I can go anywhere in the inner city, and the people love us because they know how we've helped them and what we're doing. So the fact of the matter is this. What they want to try to do is go from what they call alt-right and KKK, white supremacists, and then label Christians. Conservative Christians are going to fit the bill, too. So this is like a almost like a Salem witch trial, where they're going to go on this hunt. You know, they first of all want to take out the president because he actually speaking for on behalf of the people. And I didn't see anything wrong with what the president said on his first statement or even his second statement. I can't believe how the media would take everything and just twist it. So this is obviously a co uh, concerted effort of the media coming together with one purpose and, and, and one goal to just label the president and try to put pressure, pressure on him to just quit throwing the towel. But Mr. President, if you are watching or listening, don't stop. The American people are behind you. And here's the thing. In the 1700s, if you go back and look at England in the mid-1700s, about 1740, 1750, the UK was in the biggest upheaval. The whole of the country was, everybody was drinking. There were drunkards from the royal family all the way down. The British people had a bad name on the continent in the rest of Europe. If you mentioned that you were British, they would almost like, you know, spit. It was a bad name. All the music, all the plays, all the poems had with foul language course. The penal code was so strict because of the crimes were so bad. Human slavery was at an all-time high. But then God sent a revival that started with the Wesley brothers that actually shook across England and actually jumped, jumped across the pond that really caused the first great awakening in America with people like George Whitfield and Jonathan Edwards and Peter Cartwright. The city of Boston only had 25,000 people popula in, the, in the population at the time, and they would preach and the crowds would come. And there was, there was opposition, of course. People would actually moon them. They would urinate in their direction. But the city had to pass a, a law that no one could sit in the trees because as they preached, the power of God would fall and people would fall out of the trees under the power. So that's what shook early America. And even coming to the 1800s in Cambridge, Kentucky, when 25,000 people gathered, uh, the city of Lexington only had 1,800 people in the population, but 25,000 people gathered. So God sent a great awakening in the 1700s and the 1800s, and America was in an upheaval. You know, in the, before the foundation of this land, you had 13 rebel colonies, and, and uh, but God brought this nation together as one nation under God. Yes, there was a problem. Yes, there were problems with slavery and all that kind of stuff. But through divine providence, this became a nation woven together by the hand of God. And I'm not saying that America's been innocent because as you and I know that America's been got hijacked from the foundation of our Federal Reserve. And then the IRS that polices the American people all the way down through the years, how they took over the education, how they begin to dumb down the people, how they even took over the seminaries. And they begin to take the word of God and make it of, of none effect, basically denying the virgin birth, denying the resurrection and taking the power of God away from the churches. This was all a, a planned design that took place many, many years ago. Then you saw prayer taken out of schools. Then you saw the Ten Commandments taken from the courthouses. So we have a whole generation now that have been raised up. They have no fear of God. And they've been pumping the filth through Hollywood, through television 
through everything possible and entertainment, basically, to put the people into the trance that they're in right now. And you could see with NBC and ABC and CNN and all of these news agencies that basically are controlled by the same people that are basically pumping night and day. Um, I was walking through the airport in Hong Kong. And there was CNN, and I could read the, 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 the ticker tape, and everything was just attacking Trump night and day, night and day. So they're on an agenda right now, but I believe that we are going to see divine intervention. And I believe with all my heart that God is going to shake America from the White House to every house, from sea to shining sea, from Maine to the Keys to San Diego to Seattle, across the great state of Alaska the Hawaiian chain, to the island nation of Guam, American Samoa, to Puerto Rico, that God is not finished with America. I don't care what the media says. I don't care what the papers say. I don't care what they try to stir up in, the, in our ineffective Congress or even our Senate, where that the whole place has been bought and is under the control of a, uh, a cabal that basically runs the show. But God put an outsider in to give America one last opportunity. And I believe that we are going to see another great spiritual awakening. That's why they're so upset. That's why they're trying to do everything that they can. That's why they, and they just label, if you don't agree with them, then you must be a racist. Well, guess what? We're not racist. We love God and we love people. We love people of every tribe and every tongue. And so God is moving in our land. I have a Bible school here. We have had 500 students here this morning and I addressed them. I spoke about some of these things, the place when wild people understand and we have every tribe and tongue in our Bible school. So God is raising up an army of men and women that will not compromise, that will not sit with one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. God's raising up preachers that are not worried about their tax exempt status, that will boldly speak out from the pulpits of the land and that will say exactly what needs to be said. And I, I, I feel it's happening, Alex. I feel God is doing that. And we are, we are seeing a groundswell. I, I believe there are more that are with us than are with them. These people are a minority that make the biggest amount of noise and try to act out like they're ma a majority. And that's not the case. So I believe we're going to see the hand of God intervene in our nation. And I understand the the planned attack to remove the president. But you know, when I launched that prayer initiative, we literally have thousands of people now that have gone to our website, revival.com, and signed up on the president prayer initiative that are praying around the clock. When I when I walked in, into a church in Hong Kong, a lady, a Chinese lady grabbed me. She said, I signed up, I signed up, I'm praying for the president. So people all over the world are praying for America, praying for our president, and praying that God intervene as he has in the 1700s, in the 1800s, that he does it one more time that God intervened in our country. So I, uh, I see all this stuff happening, but I have, I have great excitement in myself, in my spirit, to believe that God has heard our cry and that he is intervening. And I believe that all these plans of the enemy, that God is just going to pull the rugs from out from underneath them. And whatever they set up, if they dig a ditch for us, they'll fall in it themselves. So I know that's a, maybe a little bit of a different side from what some people would, would expect or want to hear, but that's what I feel right down in, in my deepest part of my heart. Hello, Pastor. This is Gary Haven. Uh, uh, we finally got Alex to get out and go on vacation. I, I got to tell you, uh, amen. Uh, you know, the only hope that we have, uh, ultimately, because this is a spiritual battle. Uh, uh, totally. uh, you know, the enemy is going to doing everything he can to still kill and destroy uh, uh, this country. And, and you're right about everything you said. I got to tell you, it was almost like a, uh, uh, a prayer for 10 minutes listening to you. Uh, you know, one of my best friends is Pastor Ramiro Pena. Uh, he's on uh, the Trump's advisory committee. So I get to spend time with him uh, almost daily to get, get to the inside. We're going to have him on here as a guest in a, in a, in a bit. Uh, and he's going to tell us about uh, Trump's spirituality. And, and uh, I think he's going to say that uh, Trump's a baby Christian, but he's a Christian. And he knows God has put him in this place and this time for this purpose uh, and understands that. And uh uh, and he is uh, one of the first presidents in memory to have a spiritual advisory committee, a group that, that he met with very early in his presidency so that he's sure to hear that, what God would have for him. And, you know, the, the, the truth is, is such a fragile thing right now. You know, what you witnessed on your trip on the TV screens, what we've seen uh, uh, all this week, 
Uh, is the truth being twisted and distorted, omitted uh, in a way that uh, that I've never seen before? And I've been an observer of this for a long, long time. Uh, we have got the truth on our side. We have to be bold about it. And I got to tell you, your your ten minutes there uh, it was articulate and bold and amazing, and I, I want to commend you for that. And it encourages everybody else, you know, people that are afraid of being ridiculed or made fun of uh, because they're standing up for the truth. It just so happens that right now, the truth is that uh, we have a good man in the White House who's trying to do the right thing by the American people in a system that has been stolen from us, a system Perfect. that has been bought and paid for. You know, either side of the aisle, it's not a Republican or Democrat thing, these people are beholden to the moneyed interest. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I made a movie. I don't know if you got to see it, Amerigeddon. And the byline of the movie was, was uh, uh, they've stolen our country and it's time to take it back. And uh, uh, I believe that right now. They have stolen our country and they're getting more violent, more dishonest, uh, uh, particularly this last week than they've been in a long, long time. We have got to recognize this. And by the way, the only hope, and I completely agree with this, is Jesus, the author of truth. We have got to come together. You know, I spent a lot of time in Haiti uh, last year. I actually lived there six weeks, uh, flying search and rescue uh, and, and save the lives of, of dozens of, guess what, black Haitians. Uh, so I've got the credentials that people can't criticize me and call me a racist. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, we love these people. And by the way, you're South African. Uh, I've been to Joburg a couple of times. Uh, it's really scary that uh, they're going to try to repeat here in America what they've done in South Africa. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on there and how we can avoid that? Well, what's happening in South Africa right now, You, first of all, the borders are open. So unofficial population is just about 100 million. And we heard that right from the inside of the uh, the headquarters in Pretoria that does all the census, they said we can't announce it, but there's 100 million people. So you got all the Nigerians that have come down, the Zambians, many, many from the, uh, Central and North Africa. We'll be right back with more on the Alex Jones Show. Gary Haven, Owen Schroyer, Pastor Rowdy Brown with us. We're listeners supported. BuzzFeed tested our supplements and found they were totally clean but tried to lie and say, but we overcharge, not knowing the very company that they had had tested other supplements and then was selling them, recommending it as the best vitamin B12 in the country, when that's who we private label from. <laughs> so we're calling it the BuzzFeed special. <laughs> but now the BuzzFeed piece is gone. They're writing derivative pieces that are even more deceptive. So they're trying to shut us down. So when you fund us, you're getting high-quality products and fun on the tip of the spear. So I'm combining last month's specials with this month's 1776 specials and calling it the BuzzFeed Special. Brain Force, 55% off, Survival Shield X2, which you really need if there's a nuclear war, but it really blocks the bad halogen, so the, it's the regular use that's great. It's not just the radioactive iodine, but it blocks the chlorine, bromide, fluoride, you name it. Survival Shield X2, they said, we tested it, it's pure iodine. It's not sodium iodine, it's not potassium iodine or iodate, it's just pure iodine, acting like that's a bad thing. They know full well. It's super hard to get the deep earth crystals totally pure in the gaseous form and then put it safely into palm oil. They know this is proprietary. It's so hilarious. Uh, super blue, toothpaste is off massively. Caveman, Alexa Pure, Alexa Breeze, uh, uh, vitamin mineral fusion, knockout, sleep aid, DNA force. We're talking 55 to 66% off across the board. Infowarsstore.com. Now, this will go for the rest of the month, but obviously some of these are going to have to stop selling because they're going to sell out. X2, because a lot of folks are buying it because of the nuclear war threat. You know, uh, iodine's, good iodine's flying off the shelves all over the country. You can just search engine that iodine flying off the shelves, CBS News, you name it. Uh, we've also, again, got the uh, iodine in the toothpaste and in the mouthwash. Really good for your gums. We have the new mouthwash with the iodine in it. Uh, and the colloidal silver as well. The Super Blue mouthwash is in. Infowarsstore.com or 888 253 3139.